Hi there! In today's video, I am going to learn the C programming language. I figured after 20 years of PHP, it's about time for me to learn some real programming languages. Especially because apparently PHP gives me negative experience as a developer. So let's do this. Now, I have written a Hello World program in C years ago. So let's see if I still remember. So I think we have to make some file called main.c or something. Doesn't matter what the name is, just some file. And should I install the recommended extensions? Maybe I should. Let's do that. 15 million <laughs> installs, okay. Okay, that is installed. Maybe that will help me a bit. So I guess it's just something like void main, and that's the main function. And then I have to print hello world here. Now, I think this was <laughs> difficult in C. Now, I have chat GPT here, and as you can see, I've been learning some Rust lately, but not any C yet. So. Let's start a new chat and let's ask, how do you write a hello world program in C? Okay, so actually it's just printf. Was it C++ that had that weird C out kind of weirdness? Okay, well that's pretty easy. Now in today's video I am not going to copy paste any code because I want to actually learn this language. So. I will just copy paste using my mind. So I have to include stdio.h. Oh, and actually I get this autocomplete here because I installed that plugin. So then we just use printf and we return zero. Okay, so printf hello world and a new line and a semicolon and return zero. Okay, let's save this. And then I have to compile it. So I think that command is gcc and main.c output main, if it is the same as with C++. Okay, <laughs> I found my first error. Return with a value <laughs> in a function returning void. Okay, so what did we? We should have it as int. Okay, okay, nothing happened because that was just a compiling. So now I should be able to run main. Hello world. Okay, that's a great start. Now, do I have to return an integer from this? What if I say void? Is it just gonna fail and say you have to return something? No. Okay, so in this case, you see this red X here because we didn't return zero. So the console thinks that something went wrong. So that's why we have to return zero. So let's do that. Okay. Now here's what I want to have as my first project in C. I want to create a CSV search tool. So I want to be able to do something like this. I want to say CSV find and give it some CSV file like products.csv. And then I want to give it a search term. So something like sunglasses. And then I want to give it a header like name. And then this should filter out all the lines from the CSV file that have sunglasses in the name. So let's try and do that. Now, actually, I will first rename this and I will call it csvfind.c. Now, I don't know what the naming convention is with the source files. It doesn't matter really, but then I can have this as csvfind as well. And can I, in fact, just run gcc main.c? Sorry, no, it's gcc csv find.c. Okay, so then it will create the. Oh no, <laughs> it will create an a dot out. Okay, so I have to give it gcc csv find.c output csv find. Okay, so I will delete this file. So what is the first thing we have to do? Now, this program is probably so simple that I could just ask ChatGPT to write it, but I don't want to do that. I want to figure it out myself. And in fact, let's try in the end when I finish it to make it with ChatGPT and see which one is better. <laughs> or maybe we can ask ChatGPT for some pointers about the code that I wrote. So I will only ask step by step. So first I would like to get these command line arguments. So how do I get those? Usually there's some kind of like argv or something, at least in PHP. So let me ask ChatGPT. I will actually continue this discussion. How do I get command line arguments in C? Okay, the main function takes two arguments, argc argument count and argv argument vector. 
argc is an integer that represents the number of command line arguments passed to the program. argv is an array of strings where each element of the array represents a command line argument passed to the program. The first element, 0, is the name of the program itself. Okay, so same as in every single language. But I have to do this. Okay, now what does char and star mean? In this example, we use the argc argument to print the number of command line arguments path to the command, okay? Then we use a for loop to iterate through each command line argument in the argv array and print it to the console. Okay, so I have to do this, argc and argv. So these are passed automatically to this main function. So I will have here int argc and char, or should you say char? I will say char because car sounds very weird. And then a star and argv and it will be an array. Was that how it was? Yes. Now, can you explain what char and star mean? Char is a data type that represents a single character, such as a letter, number, or symbol. In C, char data type is defined to be one byte in size, which can hold a value between, okay, depending on whether it is signed or unsigned, all right? Char letter A creates a variable letter of type char and initialize with, okay. You can also use scanf function to read a character from the user input, okay. The asterisk, not a star, is used to declare a pointer variable in C. A pointer is a variable that stores the memory address of another variable. By using a pointer, you can directly access and manipulate the value of the variable it points to. What? For example, int asterisk p creates a pointer variable p that can point to an integer variable. To assign the address of an integer variable to p, you can use the ampersand address of operator, like this, where x is an integer variable. Okay. In addition, the asterisk is also used to declare a pointer to a car char variable, which is often used to represent a string in C programming. For example, char str is hello world, creates a pointer variable str that points to the first character of the string hello world. Note that char asterisk is also known as a C string, which is a sequence of characters terminated by no character. You can use various string manipulation functions such as strlen, strcopy, strcat, strcmp to manipulate C strings. Okay, so is there no string in C? No. Okay, so it is a pointer into the memory where there is a string. But I don't get why it's called that char. It's a single letter, but we have multiple letters. Okay, how do I concatenate strings? How do I concatenate strings in C? strcat. Okay, so I can use printf to do this. Okay, well that's actually what I wanted to do. I, want, I don't want to concatenate anything. I just want to say hello s, and then I can pass it the argv1 and then I can do this and I can run CSV find test. Hello test. Okay, so that's how we can do it. So then since argc is going to be the number of parameters, then I should check that we need at least two parameters. So if, I'm pretty sure there's an if statement in C, if argc is lesser than three, then we should print out some sort of error. Print f usage csv find well here we can actually use the name of the program and then we can say input file and search term and header name how do you actually do this properly <laughs> let's do something like man cat okay so should this be input file search term and then header name header name and a new line and then we should return with one, because that is an error. Okay, so if we now compile this, we get an error, because I forgot to pass in the argv0, which should be the name of the program. And if I then run just this, it will say usage is this. Okay, so then I should be able to get those as variables. 
So I can just say input file is argv1 and I of course have to set the types. So this will be char and do I have to put the star? Where do I put the star? Like this and char search term is going to be argv2 and then now I might not have a header name because I want that to be optional. So how do I do this? Can I have like a boolean? Has search uh, filter header is going to be... Let's actually not implement that yet. Let's just do this. So now I have an input file and a search term. So let's see if I can print them out. Input file and search term. Searching for in. And I need to put this the other way. And then I compile it and I run it like this. It says that and then I say products.csv and sunglasses. Searching for sunglasses in products.csv. Okay, that's great. Now how do we read a file line by line? How do I read a file line by line in C? F gets. So it's the same as PHP. Actually, it's exactly the same as PHP, but it's a bit different because in PHP, F gets returns the line, but here the buffer changes, I guess. So here we are defining a file, a file pointer, and we are opening file name.txt. And what is this buffer? Okay, <laughs> now we get to the difficult part of C. So I guess we have to like, okay, I understand now. So we have to initialize a buffer and we get 100 characters from the file into the buffer. So this will not read a line, or will it? It will, but the limit is this. Okay, so in PHP there's a limit too, but you can set to no limit. But I guess in C you cannot say that, okay, there's no limit, just read the whole line. You have to set, this is the limit for it. Okay, now I wonder why the file has to be here and here. Can't you just say file fp is f open? Let's read the text. In this example, we declare a file pointer fp and a character buffer buffer. Then we use the f open function to open the file file name.txt in read mode. If the file cannot be opened, we print an error message. Okay. Next we use a while loop to read each line of the file using f gets. The loop continues until the end of the file is reached. Inside the loop, we print each line using the printf function, okay? Finally, we close the file using the fclose function. When you run this program, it reads the file. Okay, that's fine. Why do we have to declare file star fp and fp equals open? Can't we define them on the same line? Yes, we can define and declare the file pointer on the same line. Here's an example. Okay, so why do we do that? Is this like some sort of convention in C? This approach is a little more concise than declaring and defining the file pointer on separate lines. However, it's important to note that the file pointer should always be initialized before using it to read from or write to a file. Now, this example looks a bit more complicated. So let's try and do this. So I will set char buffer and I will set it to 100. But I think I need more than 100, because I guess that this will limit the line to 100 characters. So, was it this way? Yes. Now, why don't we have the star in? This is not a pointer. And then I have to say file star fp equals f open, and I will pass in the input file, and I will set the mode as read. Okay. And if it's null, then there was an error. So if fp is null, then printf error reading file s, and we'll pass in the input file. And we will return with one. And then we have to do the while loop. So while f gets fp, no, this is the buffer, buffer, and the limit is 100, and the file. While it is not null, is it null or false? Null. We read the line. S print f, and we will say line s buffer. Now, what are we gonna do to the buffer? Is f gets going to 
replace the buffer every time. It's going to start over. And does this have to be the exact same as this? If this is smaller, then is it going to not write the whole buffer and then it will start from the wrong position? Let's see. And let me move this up here and I will F close FP. So let's see if we can compile this. Now we have to create the products of CSV first. Products.csv. Now here is where I'm going to use ChatGPT. Please create a CSV file of 50 products. Is that too much for ChatGPT? With ID, SKU, name, price, and description. Sure, here's an example. Let's see how many it will actually create. Whoa, <laughs> the description is very long. Didn't expect that. Okay, we got 10 products. So let's paste that in here. So now we have a products.csv file. So let's compile this and we get an error. Format not a string literal and no format arguments. Okay, what did I do wrong? Not s printf. <laughs> printf. Okay, and then we run this again. Okay, and we got lines here. Okay, now we are able to read all the lines of the CSV. Now, how do we actually read the columns of the CSV file? I think at first I will use just like a split. Is there a split in C? So I can say, what can I say? Um, calls. What is this? This is an array. So how do I set an array? Do I need to do the char star um, calls is buffer dot split comma. Expression must have struct or union type, but it has type char. Okay, let's go back to chat GPT. Is there a function in C that will split a string by a delimiter? There is no built-in function to split a string by delimiter. <laughs> However, you can write your own function to achieve this. One way to split a string by delimiter is to use the str ok function. The str ok function is defined in the string.h library and can be used to tokenize a string based on specified delimiter. Here's an example. OK. <laughs> it wasn't str ok, it's str talk to tokenize a string. OK. Note that str talk modifies the original string by inserting null characters to separate the tokens. Therefore, it's important to make a copy of the original string if you want to preserve it. Okay, so token is a pointer again. And again, we set it here separately. Is that necessary? Please let me know in the comments if you know why it is done like this. So I guess if I understand this correctly, this will read the string until a comma. But then here we set it to strtok null and comma. What does that mean? In this example, we first declare a string containing the text apple banana orange. Then we use the str talk function to split the string by the delimiter comma. First we call str talk with the string str and the delimiter comma as arguments. This returns a pointer to the first token in the string, which is the substring apple. Okay. Then we use a while loop to iterate over the remaining tokens in the string. Inside the loop we print each token using the using the printf function. Finally, we call strtok with a null pointer and the delimiter comma as arguments. This continues tokenizing the string until there are no more tokens left. So does this save the string somewhere when you call it the first time? Because we, we're not passing it here anymore. Okay, let's try this. So we are going to say token is that. So char token is str talk. And we give it the buffer and we give it a comma. And then we say while token is not null, we will print f. Let's put a pipe in between these. So we will print the token. And then we have to call token is str talk null and a comma. That is so weird. And do we need to do something else? No, that's it. That's very weird. Let's see if this works. Let's add here printf uh, new line. So now if I, okay, <laughs> if I compile it, I get an error. Implicit declaration of function, uh, I have to include um, string.h. 
Okay, now we were able to compile it. And let's run it. Okay, it actually worked. So now we have these pipe separated fields here. Okay, that's great. Now, this is not really proper CSV parsing because if we have a comma inside this description or somewhere, then it will split it at that point. But this is my first program, so cut me some slack over here. So now we can read all of the tokens. Now, I have to ask, why do we call the strtok with null inside the loop? Where does it know which string to tokenize? The reason we call strtok with null pointer inside the loop is to continue tokenizing the same string from where we left off in the previous call. When strtok is first called, it expects the first argument to be a null terminated string to be tokenized, and the second argument to be a string of the limiter character. The first call returns a pointer to the first token in the string, and it replaces the first delimiter character it finds with a null terminator. Subsequent calls to strtok with a null pointer as the first argument continue tokenizing the same string. Okay, so it saves it somewhere. Okay, that's good. So let's take a look at our products.csv. We have a header here. So I would like to extract the header from this. So I should keep track of the line that we are on. Do I have to just add like an int line number is zero? And then here I will say line number plus plus. And then I should have some sort of array for the header. So how do I make an array? I have no idea. <laughs> how can I make an array in C that I can append elements to. In C, arrays have a fixed size, great, which means you cannot append elements to them once they are created. However, you can use dynamic memory allocation and pointer arithmetic to create a resizable array that can be appended with new elements. That's great. Here's an example that shows how to create a resizable array in C using dynamic memory allocation. What is this madness? Okay, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> there must be a simple, simpler way to do this. I'm thinking about it in the wrong way. So, so how do I... Like, I want to save the column numbers of each header. Okay, let's do this later. <laughs> so let's just first search from all of the columns. So I have my search term here. So now I could just add it here in the whole line. I could just read the whole line and search for a word in there. But ultimately I want to search from a specific header. So I will have to put it inside this one. So how should I do this? I should check if this column contains the search term, then we will print out this line. So in fact, I have to save some kind of boolean print line is false. And that is not how you do it. Is there no boolean? You have to say boolean? No. You have to have just an int. Is that... Do I really need to do it like this? Let's do it like this at first and then ask ChatGPT if there's a boolean. And then here I will add if print line is one or line number is zero. So if we are on the first line or we want to print the line, then we will print the line. So we will do print f and we will say s and we will give it the buffer. And is there going to be a new line? Maybe you have to put it in here. Now here I'm getting some error. Expression must be a modifiable value. Modifiable L value. What? Okay, that was the problem. <laughs> I had just one equal sign here. Okay, so then we have to check if the token contains the search term. How do we do that? How do I check if a string contains another string? str str. If it is not null, then it is present. Okay. So I'll say if str str buffer no token search term is not null and I have an extra equal sign here, then print line is one and I will remove this here. So now if I say something like um, apple, so I compile this and I say apple searching for apple in products, 
ID one. Mm, what happened here? <laughs> okay, so is this a hundred characters long? It is not. Why did it print just this? Did I do something wrong here when I print the buffer? Oh, <laughs> this is what ChatGPT warned me about. The buffer will change when it is put into the str talk. So I have to save the line. So I have to say char line is buffer. Does that copy it or just assign it to that? And then I have to say here line. Let's see what that does. I get an error. Initialization of char from char star makes integer from pointer without cast. Mm. Okay, let's ask ChatGPT. How do I copy a char? str copy. Okay, so <laughs> I have to create a new. So char line 100 will be str cpy buffer. Sorry, <laughs> I'll just have to set this like that and then say str cpy from buffer to line. So now the line should have the same thing as the buffer. So let's try if this works. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, I have to compile it first. Searching for Apple, okay. I get nothing. So what is going on here? Let me move this printf statement up here and see if we are able to print the line after that. Wait a minute. <laughs> I did the wrong way. <laughs> I need to copy to line from buffer. So apparently PHP is not the only language that has inconsistencies with the naming of things and the order of arguments. So let's compile it and let's run it. Hey, look at this. I think that works now. But I do not need the new line up here. So I have to remove that and compile it and run it. No, I do need it. But why do I get an extra line here? Now this is probably now 100 characters long. Yes, 99 in fact, because one of them will be the null character. So now I have to, and that's the reason why there is no new line. So I don't have to have new line here, but the buffer needs to be larger than the longest line. So let me put like an integer here. Can I do this integer buffer length? is 1024 and then I will add it here and here and here and then I will compile it and I will run it. Okay, that looks better. Now it works. So now we are actually searching from the CSV already. So if I say something like Snapdragon, I get nothing because it is case sensitive. Snapdragon, I get all the lines that have Snapdragon in them. That's great. Now let's make it case insensitive. How do I make a string lowercase? Too lower. Okay. So I have to include C type. Too lower. That's good. So let's include include C type dot H. And I will say that the search term will be too lower, arg v2. And I will make this too lower as well. Perhaps I should make them to lower here. Maybe that makes more sense. Okay, so now it should be case insensitive. So if I compile this again, I get an error. Passing argument one of two lower makes integer from pointer without a cast. Um, <laughs> is this true? Do I have to? It takes just one character. No way. In C, you can make a string lowercase by converting each uppercase letter to its lowercase equivalent using the to lower function. The to lower function is defined in the C type H library and takes an integer argument representing a character code. If the argument is an uppercase letter, to lower returns its lowercase equivalent. Otherwise, it returns the argument unchanged. This is crazy. So, can I create my own function here? Can I say char? How do I return like an array? I have to do this char to 
lowercase and it will take a char text. This is not the right <laughs> way to do this. So I have to take the length of the string and then make everything lowercase. Okay, so I will say int len is str len text and then for int i is zero, i smaller than len, i plus plus and text, this should be like this and text i equals to lower text i and then return text. Is that how you do it? So then I could go here and I could say to lowercase. But now I don't know about this return type because it should be an array. Let's see what it says if I compile this. It says passing argument one of strlen from incompatible pointer type. Expected const char but argument is of type char. So do I have to add const? <laughs> now I'm just guessing. This is not the right way to do this. No. Should I ask ChatGPT? I will do this. It seems very messy to loop through the letters in the code. I tried to create a function that would do it for me, but it doesn't compile. What's the problem? There are a few issues with the code you provided. The char text parameter should be declared as char text. In C, an array of characters is represented as a pointer to the first element of the array. Therefore, you only need to declare char star. Okay. The strlen function expects a pointer to a null terminated string. However, in the function declaration, text is declared as an array. Okay. So it is not an array. Okay. Here it is an array because there are multiple pointers to multiple different strings. But here it is not, a string is not an array of characters. I mean, I guess it is, but it's not in this case. So this should be set only like this. So this is just the number. Here starts a string. Okay. The function returns a char star, but you are returning text, which is star. <laughs> The function returns a char star, but you are returning text, which is a char star star, a pointer to a pointer to a character. To fix this, you should change the return type of the function to void or in. What? Oh, it, it is int. Okay. This is, this is true. So it will be an int because it is the number of the pointer of the position in memory where this text is. So that should do it. If I do this and I compile it, I still get errors. Returning char star from a function with return type int. So do I actually have to have it as char? Returning char star from a function with return type char makes integer from pointer without a cast. Do I have to add a star here? Is that valid code? <laughs> ha! It compiled. How should it, this be? Should it be like that? Or like that? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. So I will do it like this. That's good. So now if I do this, it still works. And if I put it lowercase, it still works. So I did it. This is my beautiful two lowercase function. Great. So what do we need to do next? That is pretty cool already. So I can search for Apple and I get all the Apple products. I can search for prod 005 and I get prod 005. I can search for retina and I get the retina XDR display. Okay, so now I need to implement the header searching. So if I want to search from a specific header, so how do I check if an argument is passed? Now I could just check if the number of arguments is a specific one. So I could say if arg c is greater than or equal to 4, then I will say char star header name is arg v 4, 3. So the name is 0, then there's 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So then I have the header name. And I will say, actually, can I do. Yeah, the boolean is bothering me now. Is there no boolean? I can say int search header 
is one. Otherwise, int search header is zero. So if we have this, we are going to search for a header. Can I set it like this? Is that going to be valid? Is that going to be one? So then I can say search header. At least I don't get any complaints from the IDE. So if we want to search for a header, then we take the header name. Otherwise, we set it to no. Actually, we don't have to do this. <laughs> so if we pass all the three arguments, then we are going to search for the header. And if we are going to search for the header, then we got to get the header. So then here we have to say if search header. Can I just do this? And current header is not header name. Then we will continue. So we will not check this column if it's the wrong header. Now what is going on here? Header name is undefined. Aha. So do I need to set it this way and then say header name is that. Okay, that seems like it is going to work. So now I have to get the current header. But actually I want to also do the lowercase thing here. So to lowercase and here as well to lowercase. Now this looks a bit terrible, <laughs> too long of a line, but we can fix it later. So how do we get current header? First of all, if line number is zero, then we are on the header row. So then we should say that the header text char header text equals token. Okay. And we should save the header number. So let's say int header number or call number is zero. And here we will say call number plus plus. And actually I will move this higher because we have to continue. We have to increment the call number there as well. So here I want to save the column number and the text of the header so that then I can check here if the current header is the header that we want. How do I do that? If this was PHP, then I would just say headers call number is header text. And then here I would say current header is headers call number. It should be before we increment it. But we cannot do this in C++. And this is going to be char again. How do we do this? Could I have like, could I like allocate some memory and then put the header names in specific points in the memory and offset them <laughs> by some, by the call number times something. And then I could calculate the position of the specific column name. Um, let's take a look at that code that ChatGPT generated before with the array. Allocate, reallocate size of. What if I create here char header buffer of 100. The limit is 100 headers. And then I will say that header buffer of column number is going to be the header text. And this is just a pointer. So I save the pointer to the header buffer. So then actually this is exactly what's going to happen. So then I can just say header buffer call number. So the current header is header buffer call number. This is exactly like an array. But instead of having like the whole string in the array, it's just a pointer to some memory location. So is that gonna work? So uh, let me comment this out and let me do something like printf s and current header and put some pipe here. So is this going to give me the headers for each of the rows? So if I compile this, I get some errors. Assignment to char from char star. So here, header buffer. Should this be star means pointer. So this is a pointer, exactly. So this buffer is an actual buffer of text, but this is a buffer of pointers to text. So let's try this again. Ha, it's compiled. So now if I do something, I put here apple segmentation fault. Okay, <laughs> this is the infamous error message from C. What happened? <laughs> ah, I have to have a double equals here. Ha ha, what happened? Uh oh, <laughs> we are reading some wrong 
memory locations. Oh no. Now is the problem that I am defining this here. Maybe that causes some problems. So should I define these up here and just set them like this? Does that affect anything? Segmentation fault. <laughs> so at first we get ID SKU name price description. ID SKU name price. So this first one is actually the current header, okay? And then we get the first line. But when we move to the second line, then we get a segmentation fault. Let me print the call number here. Uh oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Has type integer. Oh, so I have to put like a D here. Okay. So here I <laughs> I'm reading something from the memory, but this is not what I want. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we are getting too many numbers. Wait a minute. Are there commas in the descriptions? Yes. <laughs> that is the reason why we are getting this error. Because there are more columns in the rows than in the header. So then it is trying to read the fifth header, but there's no fifth header. One, two, three, four, five. No, there's no sixth header. So can I add some if statement somewhere? That if the column number exists in the header buffer, then we get the current header. How can I check before reading from a buffer if the buffer index exists? Ah, size of. Hmm, so, so, so actually I think the size of will return the 100 every time. But I think it will be initialized to null or something. No, it will be initialized to whatever is in there at the moment, in that memory location. So can I set them all to null? Can I initialize a buffer of x size to all null bytes? Yes, mem set. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the right way to do this, but let's say mem set. Set n bytes of s to c. So header buffer 0 100 was that correct yes so then i can say if current header is not null then we will print it okay let's see if this will work okay we do not see any weird letters inside here so that should work so i can remove this and then here i should say if we want to search header and current header is null or it is not the same as the header we want to search. Then we continue. So now we should avoid the segmentation fault. But I didn't pass it now. So um, I still have some debugging somewhere. <laughs> so I will remove this and I will run it again. Sorry, I have to compile it and run it. Okay, now it's working. So now if I add here name, <laughs> then I get a segmentation fault. Ah. So why does that happen? Let me remove that. So that works. So something is happening here now. Um, current header. If current header is null, what if I remove this part? It still works. So I don't think it should go to this part if this is null. It should just check the first part and then don't check this at all if this is true. Mm. Let's say if current header is not null, then printf. Didn't I do this already? <laughs> current header. Let's do like this. ID, 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 ID. Okay. Wait a minute. 
does this two lowercase do something to the <laughs> original header? I think it does. Why are we always in ID? Let's put um, the call number here as well and compile it and run it. Okay, <laughs> so the column number is not being set to zero, even though I do it here. That is why we get the segmentation fault. So let's in fact add a printf up here. When are we going to this statement where it is going to be zero? The call number should be zero with every row, but it is not happening. Zero. And then <laughs> we're not going there. Wait a minute. I think we are changing something now. We are changing the token inside this loop, maybe because of the two lowercase here. And then something <laughs> weird is happening. Let's remove those statements from there and compile this. Now it's still just adding the column number. Mm. Okay, let's try this again. This is now commented out and I compile this and I run it. It works just like it should. So if I now add here printf d call number and I compile it and I run it, I get 0, 0, 1. Sorry, let's put 0 and new line. And compile it and run it. Okay, so now we are zeroing it out with every line. But when we add this, something terrible happens. So if I remove these, and I compile it and I run it. It still works. So these are now changing something. If I remove this and that, and I compile it and I run it, then I get a segmentation fault. Ah, now I know what the reason is. <laughs> it is the continue statement that is the problem. So I'm not changing the token and I'm not reassigning the token. So I will put that up here. So where do we read the token? In many places. So let me move it up here or copy. I will do it here as well. So if we continue then we set this token again so that we will read the next token. Now we are just reading the same token over and over again <laughs> if we go to this continue statement. Now should I do it the other way? Should I put this inside here and then if not search header or no, that's, that's too complicated. <laughs> let's do it this way. That's fine. So let's try this one more time. Let's compile this and let's run it. So now we didn't get anything because we are searching for Apple in the name. But in the name, there is Apple. <laughs> so I should find it. Um, so let's add some printf here. Skip ss and we'll pass in the current header and header name. And we will compile it and we will run it. Skip null, skip null. And let's add a new line here as well. Okay, so skip ID name, skip SKU name, skip name name. Oh yeah, because um, we are still skipping because this will return, <laughs> because this will return an integer that is the pointer to the memory location of the string. So here we have to use strcmp, which is, S, which, which is string compare. We have to compare these two strings. And how does this work? How does the strcmp function work? The function starts comparing the first character of each string. Yeah, yeah, I get that, but what is the return value? Still one. Okay, so it returns zero. It returns the difference between them. Mm, wait a minute. Compare two strings. The function takes two arguments which are two strings to be compared. Uh, I think that is what we need. So if this is zero, then we skip. So let's do this again. Okay, <laughs> now we got apple here. So we skip name name. We still have name name here. Skip null name, skip null name, null name. What? It worked. But why does it say skip name name? Maybe because this two lowercase is again changing the original value of this. So can I in fact do this here 
when I set the current header, I set it to lowercase. And header name, I also set it to lowercase. To lowercase. So then I don't have to compare them here anymore. And then I compile this and I run it. I get a segmentation fault. Okay, let's go back. So I will print f before this statement and I will say check and I will compile it and I will run it. Check 10 name, prod 10 name. Aha, check id name, check sku name, check name name, skip name name. Wait a minute. Ah, I did this the wrong way. This should be if it's not equal to zero, then we skip it. Damn it. So now, do we get anything? Okay, now we skip everything but the name. But here, we are still getting the column value as the header. So what is going on here? We are zeroing out the column number. How about the line number? Line number is zero. Ah, we are <laughs> adding the line number here. So I will move this up here as well. No, 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 because this is inside a different while loop. And we are not continuing from this. So let me add here. Header is going to be header text. Okay, we are getting header ID SKU name price description. And then we are not setting them afterwards. But somehow we are still skipping current header. Call number. Does it not work like this? <laughs> How do I set a pointer? to a specific index of a buffer. Maybe it doesn't work with those curly braces. In C, you can set a pointer to a specific index of a buffer by taking the address of the buffer and adding the index as an offset. This will give you a pointer to the memory location at the, specif at the specified index of the buffer. So what is this doing? Hello world index 7. No, this is getting the value. Or do I need to use this method of doing it? In this example, we first declare a buffer, buff, containing the text hello world. We also declare an integer variable index to store the index. When we use the ampersand operator to get a pointer to the first element of the buffer and then add index as an offset. To get a pointer to the memory location at the specified index, we store this pointer in a char star variable ptr. Finally, we print the character. So do I have to get the pointer this way? Do I have to do this? Let's see what that does. No, it doesn't work. If I create a buffer, char buffer 100, and I want to add a char to index 0 and 7, how can I do that? You cannot create a buffer. <laughs> you cannot create a buffer of type char buffer 100. Wait a minute. To store characters. This creates an array of 100 character pointers, not a buffer to store character. Instead, you can create a buffer of type char buffer 100 to store characters. Okay, I, I meant pointers. Okay. Now we are getting to the malloc function. Okay, free buffer. When you run this program, you should see the output modified buffer C. What? <laughs> Note that the characters at indexes 0 and, 7, 0 and 7 have been replaced with C's and S. Okay, so these others are null characters. So do I have to do that? Not this. Maybe this is kind of the same thing. I'm just doing it in a stupid manner. So I had to say malloc 100 times size of character. Okay. Does that do anything differently? I cannot do that. Implicit declaration of function malloc. Ah, I need to include stdlib. Assignment to char from char star makes integer from pointer without a cast. So line 60. Header buffer, column number, equals to header text. 
Now, I guess I have to call the free, otherwise it's gonna stay in the memory. Assignment to Char from Char Star. So, does this need to be Char Star Star? It compiled and it does not work. Okay, why are we getting this PLE iPhone? Um, let's remove this two lowercase here again and these as well. I think those are doing something weird. Wait a minute. Let's add the column number here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But why is it different? So do I now have to use the ampersand here? No, I can't use. Initialization of char star from incompatible pointer type char star star. <sighs> so if I do this, it complains that when I set the header buffer to header text. So what if I remove the star from this? Because exactly, that's what I want to do. Right. But I can't do that. Because this is a pointer. So this has to be a pointer as well. But then this will be a pointer as well, but it is not. Assignment to char. What if I do that? Can I do that? Can it be an array of buffers? Array of pointers? No. Let's go back again. To this version, where I'm setting it with the mem set. And let's see what this does. Sorry, I have to compile it and then run it. Okay, skip ID, skip SKU, skip price, skip description. But then why is the current header changing? Hmm. Let's go back to chat. I'm looping through a bunch of strings. I want to save the string pointers to specific indexes in a buffer. Then I want to refer to a specific string by its index later. How do I do that? So this is exactly what I'm doing. So I have a bunch of strings, which are these headers, so these tokens. But now this is a pointer. Okay, I understand now. I need to copy this because the token will change. So then the next time this runs, it will save the token to the same memory location. So I have to copy the token to another place. So I have to use the string copy again. So I have to say char header text and I will set it to size of token. So I will initialize it with the size of the token. So this is a new buffer. And then I will say string copy header text token. So I will copy the token, so I will remove this line. So now I should have a new area in memory where I save the header. And then I set the header buffer of index column number to that memory location. But is this now gonna work? <laughs> Let's see. So if I now compile this, SDRCPY. Okay, it compiled. Let's run it. Stack smashing <laughs> detected. Terminated, aborted, core dumped. Okay, what happened? Skip ID name, skip SKU name, skip price name, script description name. Okay, skip, skip description name. So now it's pointing to the description every time. And actually there's a new line here, I should trim that. Um, let's add the column number here again. Call number. Okay, so all of the locations have description in them. Let's again remove these two lowercase functions here. Okay, it's still the same. It's the last one always. So let's put here printf header ds and I will say call number and header text and I will put this in here as well. And let's see what this does. Header 0 id, header 1 sku, Header 2 name, header 3 price, header 4 description. Skip 5 description, 1 description, 2 description, 3, 
four, five. <sighs> Let me add here some printf call one. And here I will always read call one from the header buffer. And let's see what it is. And I will add a new line here. Call one description, description, description. How about call two? Call two is description as well. <sighs> that is weird. The problem is here that it is pointing to the header text, which is at a specific location in memory. But then I'm saving it there every time in the same place. So this will be always the last header. So let's go back to this token version. Let me copy this code to ChatGPT and ask it. I want to save the value of token into a buffer at a specific location. However, it seems that the data in the memory location is being replaced with every iteration. How can I keep it as the same string? The problem is that on each iteration of the loop, the pointer in header buffer call number is being updated to point to the current token string. This means that all previous values in header buffer are overwritten with the new value. If you want to keep the token strings as separate entities in memory and store pointers to them in the header buffer, you need to allocate memory for each token string and copy the contents of the token string to the allocated memory. You can then store a pointer to the allocated memory in the header buffer. Here's an example that shows how to allocate memory for each token string and store pointers to the allocated memory in the header buffer. Okay, so I have to have like a nested thing. So <laughs> now it's actually doing <laughs> what I'm trying to do here. A CSV parser. Okay, so I have to do that. Let's do that. So where is my header buffer? Here. So I can have a hundred headers which can have a hundred characters. That's a lot of headers. Let's just put 50 headers. And let's not do the mem set. And then I will string copy to the specific column number the token. So here I will say header buffer column number token. So this is not a pointer. Header buffer. Why doesn't it work? Header buffer. Oh, sorry. I can't do it this way. I have to say string copy token. So I will copy the token to the header buffer of this column number. And then I can get the current header from the header buffer at the column number. Let's see if this one will work. It compiled. And now we are comparing name. ID name, SKU name, name name, price name. Yes, now it's going to work. So now I can add back to the two lowercase and two lowercase. And I can then compile it again and run it. So now we are comparing price name, description name. Now here we have a new line in the end, so I should trim that somehow. But let's remove all these print F's from here. And let's run this now. Compile and run. Okay, so if I now say that we want to search from the SKU, we don't find anything. And well, the description will not work either because we have a new line there. So how do I trim new lines from a string? STRCSPN. CSPN. What does that mean? STRCSP. New line position. STRCSPN. Okay. So it will modify the original, right? Yes. STRCSPN. So I will say str CSPN this and remove the new line and compile it and run it. It still doesn't work. Ah, so I have to do this. Well, that is terrible. So if I have to get the int new line pos is this. So this gets the position of a new line and then it checks if 
the character at the position of the new line is a new line, then it will be an empty string. What? The str CSPN function takes two arguments, a string and a set of characters to search for in the string. It returns the length of the initial segment of the string that does not contain any of the characters in the set. Okay. You can use this function to find the position of the first new line character in the string and then replace it with a null terminator to remove it from the string. Okay. So let me do this. Let's say char trimmed is trim token and then let's set this to trimmed and then I will create a trim function here which is kind of like this to lowercase but it will be char star trim and it takes a char star text and it says char star trimmed is string copy like this trimmed text so in fact I will just set it this way and then I will copy text the trimmed. And do I have to set a size? Probably. Wait a minute. Yes. So let's put 256. And then I copy that text into this one. And then I will say int new line position is going to be str c spn. And I will give it trimmed. And I will give it new line. And then I will say if trimmed new line pos is a new line, then trimmed new line pos is null. And then I will return trimmed. Is that correct? Yes. So now this should trim it. <laughs> Do I need to set here the length as well? Let's see what happens. We get a bunch of errors. Warning, passing argument one of string copy from incompatible pointer type. Char text. Let's just have to do this. Comparison between pointer and integer. Does it matter if it's in the single quotes? Function returns address of local variable. Well, thanks. <laughs> so this is local <laughs> to this function. So should I pass like something char star trimmed? So then I have to, actually, yeah, that's the problem with this two lowercase, because I'm editing the original. So here I am passing it the text and a variable into which I will return the trimmed version. Now I'm not sure if I should do this. Well, if I trim the token, then that's going to cause problems. Or I will just return int and I will return the new line pos, whatever. And then when I call the trim, I will actually do this. This will be 256. And I will say trim token to trimmed. <laughs> and then I will compile this and it compiles. And I will do this and it works. Look at this. Now we are returning all of the products that have Apple in the description. How about I say best description? Now everything that has best in the description will be returned. So now it works. So I can say Samsung and I get all the products that have Samsung in the description. And I can say name, Samsung in the name. Well, it's the same products. Uh, what else could we search for? Search for everything that is $12.99 price. And we get everything that is $12.99 price. Great. So now it actually works. Now I have created my first C application and it filters a CSV file based on a search term and a column name. So that is amazing. Please let me know in the comments what do you think of my C coding. And remember this is my first C application. So don't be too hard on me. So now I've been coding almost three hours now, but let's see if ChatGPT would have been able to do this. Now, this is almost a hundred lines of code. I didn't expect that it would be this long, although it's not very long, but I still expected this to be simpler than this. Now let's see if ChatGPT is able to do this. Please create a C program that works in the following manner. CSV find input file search 
term header name. It should be a command line tool that searches for a search term in the columns of a CSV file from the specified column specified by the header name and it should output the CSV file with only the lines that match the search including the headers. Let's see if it can do this. Here is a C program. Okay, now this is interesting <laughs> that we have this max line length and max field length and max fields because I had to set stuff like this in my code. So actually we should define them like this. And here we are doing exactly what I did. So we are checking if we have less than three arguments then we will say this is how you should use this. And then we're getting the input file, the search term and the header name. Now here it sets the header name to null and then it says if we have four arguments then it sets the header name. Okay. And it does exactly this and it says fail to open file. Exactly what I did. And then what does it do here? It sets a line max line length, field max field length and fields max fields, num fields header index, line index. Okay, and it loops through and adds the line number. If it's line one, it's the header, okay? Just like I did. If the pointer is not null pointer, okay? Extract fields, num fields, max fields. Too many fields in the header, so it has a bit more checks here. S scan F, whoa, what does it do here? S tier dop, okay. So I think this is some kind of regex here, and it's looking for yeah, it's looking for a comma or a new line, something like this. Ah, maybe this will like actually parse the CSV properly. Okay, let's copy this and see if it actually works as well as mine. So let's copy it here and save it and I will compile it. GCC CSV find chat GPT output CSV find chat GPT. It compiled. Let's run it. Products.csv apple name. Header name not found. Okay, well, this is not case insensitive. Let's see if we say name like this. SKU name price. And I guess the search term is not case insensitive either. Okay, it works, but it's not case insensitive. And if I say stunning, nothing. But if I say description, then we get these stunning products. Okay, so <laughs> there I could have saved three hours of my life by just asking ChatGPT to make this code. But of course, that wasn't really the point of this video. I didn't really need this tool. I just wanted to learn C. And I think I have successfully learned at least a little bit of C. So this is a good starting point. But anyway, this is going to be the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.